Hey, how's it going everyone? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we made our wave manager class. And now we have waves of two enemies at a time coming through our maze and then ending right there and starting a new wave. If you want to see the first episode of the series, you can click somewhere on the screen that I put an annotation. And the Patreon is the other annotation. You guys know the drill. So we're going to do something fun this time. Or at least I think it's fun. Because it's something that actually makes a somewhat big difference in our game so far. It's a new kind of feature that we've been talking about for a while, which is we're going to have our tower track our enemies. So I don't know how long this episode's going to take, but we do need to do a lot of stuff. We're going to be editing all of these classes that I've opened here, the wave manager, the game, the player, the tower cannon, and the wave. So if you want to open those as well. And uh, let's get started. So to start off here, we are going to go to our Tower Cannon class. And if you'll remember, the reason we kind of had to redo... Well, we had to do it for a few reasons, but we had to redo our Wave Manager and Wave class and like kind of get that all set up before we did this because our tower was blind to our enemies. So the first thing we're going to do is take advantage of the fact that we can see our enemies now by making a array list of type enemy named enemies in our tower cannon class. And in our constructor here, after our damage, we're also going to add an array list of type enemy named enemies. And then in the bottom of our constructor, we're going to say this dot enemies equals enemies. So let's go to our game class. First off, we're going to be having our player take care of our towers. So this is just kind of like a temporary to see if our tower actually worked in the game, this line here. So we can delete this. And we can also get rid of the actual tower. We named it temp variables because if you remember, we're getting rid of it. So delete that. And tower to update, delete that. Our player class now is going to need a copy of the wave manager. So wave manager wave manager inside the player constructor and then above in the player variables we're going to make a private wave manager named wave manager and guess what we're going to do in the bottom of the constructor this dot wave manager equals what could it be wave manager all right now let's go to our game class you can see we have an error here and it's because we're making a player with only a grid, which we can't do anymore. We need to give it a wave manager, but we can't really do it like this. It won't tell us it's wrong, but that's because we're smarter than the computer here. And we know that we want to give it the wave manager after we instantiate the wave manager right here, after we initialize it. So let's copy this line and put it below where we start our wave manager. All right. So now our player has a copy of our wave manager, which is our making our enemies. And our tower takes a list of enemies. So let's go to our player class. And kind of like how our wave manager takes care of all of our waves and our wave takes care of all of our enemies, our player is going to take care of all of our towers. And the reason for that is because our player is the person that's placing the towers and probably upgrading them or whatever we want to, you know, let the player do but the player is going to be directly in charge and interacting with the towers. So inside the player class, we're going to make a new variable. It's an array list of type tower cannon, which is the name of our tower class. And we're going to name it tower list. We need to import array list. And then in our constructor, this dot tower list equals new array list of type tower. initialize that variable uh oh tower cannon there we go and next we're going to add a tower to our tower list so we're going to create a tower with the player so here in our update method we're handling all of our input for the game so let's label that let's say uh Handle keyboard inputs above where we do our keyboard and handle mouse inputs above where we handle our mouse. 
just to get organized. And speaking of getting organized, update should be lowercase, set tile should be lowercase, uh, set tile down here, lowercase, and lowercase move index. Should have done that from the start, but we're doing it now as we go. So at the top of our update method, we are going to say, hmm, we're gonna update our towers. So in our wave class, you can see we have four enemy E and enemy list, update our enemy. That's pretty much exactly what we're gonna do in our player. Four tower cannon T in tower, oops. I'm like talking at the same time. That means in four tower cannon T in tower list T dot update. So that just means go through all of the towers that we've made so far and update them. And now we need to actually make one. So in our keyboard input here, we're saying if we do the right key, then change the tile. I can't run it right now, but it changes the tile that we're painting. Below that, we're going to say if and key, it's going to be the same thing, but instead of the right key, I'm going to make it T for now. Everything else is the same up here. Keyboard dot get event key state. And we're going to say tower list dot add new tower cannon, which takes what? A texture, a start tile, damage, and enemies. So for the texture, that'll be quick load cannon base. And then the start tile will be grid dot get tile. Uh, I'm going to put it at 18 and 9 is I think what I want. And then what do we need? Damage? Doesn't matter because they don't damage yet, but 10 and a copy of our enemy list. So because we updated our tower cannon constructor here to take in a, a, a array list of enemies here, we need to actually give it that list of enemies. But where do we get it, right? The player doesn't know, but the player now has access to the wave manager class, which if you remember from a couple episodes ago where I did that perfect Mona Lisa-like drawing of our hierarchy, the wave manager gives us access to the wave class, and the wave class gives us access to the uh, to the uh, list of enemies. So we're gonna say wave manager dot get. We need to make the getter. So in our wave manager class, we need to find a way to access the current wave. So let's say at the bottom here, public wave, because that's the type of variable we're going to be returning. Get current wave. And we're just going to return current wave. So now in our player class, we can say wave manager dot get current wave dot get. We need to make that getter too. So in our wave class, so in our wave manager class, we had to make a getter to get the current wave. And now that we're in that current wave, we need to make a getter to get the list of enemies, enemy list. So at the bottom, we're gonna say public array list of type enemy, get enemy list, I guess I'll call it. Should I say get enemies? I'm gonna say get enemies. And we're gonna return, what's it called, enemies or enemy list? It's called enemy list. All right, I'm gonna name it get enemy list then. All right, so back in our player class, we can finally finish this line. Wave manager dot get current wave dot get enemy list. And semicolon. There we go. So that is what our tower takes every time we make it. A texture, which is kind of useless because we're loading another texture here anyway, but we'll fix that in the future. But anyway, a texture, a tile to spawn on, damage, and a list of all the enemies so that can track the enemies. So in our game class here, we have an error, player.update. Why, oh, okay. In our game class, we need to make that a lowercase u. All right, 
So next thing we're going to do in our tower class, tower cannon class, is we're going to make it so it actually tracks an enemy. So first off, we're going to make a new variable, private enemy. And this is not a list of enemies. This is a very specific enemy called target. So, you know, future towers might do like an AOE, like area of effect kind of thing, or it might, you know, lock onto multiple targets at once. But for our very first tower cannon, it's just going to have one target and it's going to focus on that target. So we have the target variable and then under float, we're going to make a variable called angle. This dot angle equals something. And before that, this dot target equals something. So what we need to do now is make two methods, one to figure out the target that we're going to look for, and then one to figure out the angle that we need to rotate our cannon so that it tracks our target. So let's first do a private vo no private enemy get target I don't know if I really want to name it this but it'll it'll do for now. And we are going to return the enemies dot get uh, I will say zero. So this is not for this episode. This is for probably next episode where we're actually going to have our enemy decide like on the fly which enemy to go for. Or I'm sorry, we're going to have our tower decide which enemy to go for like based on, you know, health or distance or whatever. But for right now, it's just going to target the first enemy uh, in the maze. So that's zero. So this dot target equals get target. So now our target variable is equal to the first enemy that spawns in our maze. So now we need a new angle method. So we're going to say private. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to name it acquire target. I like that better. Because get is usually for like getter methods, like, you know, get current wave and stuff. Acquire target. All right. So for our angle method, private void calculate angle we should actually make this a float private float calculate angle because we're going to set this dot angle equal to calculate angle and in here we're going to do some math so it's going to look complicated and you don't necessarily need to know all of the underlying math in it. It's like dealing with arc tangents and some trigonometry and stuff. It's only a couple lines, but if you want to brush up on your trig, then you know feel free to Google that stuff. But we're gonna go for it here. So we're gonna say double angle temp, temporary variable we're using, equals math dot a tan two for arc tangent, and you'll see it takes a y and an x, and these are coordinates. So we want to take our enemy, which is our target, dot get y minus y, which is the y position of our tower, and then for x, we want target dot get x minus x, which is our tower's x position. All right, you follow me so far? So if you hover over this uh, method here, you can actually see it tells you a little bit about it. And uh, it takes a y in x position. And you, know, you can read up on exactly what this is, but I'm not going to go into it right now. A lot of trigonometry. And we're going to return a, another math method here. Math dot, oh gosh, what is it? Something, ang something degrees set. <laughs> Gosh, I forget this method name. Floor, floor, gets... Two degrees. There we go. Math.2 degrees. 
because we're transited at two degrees from the arc tangent here, or from radians, I guess. And we're going to pass in our angle temp variable. And we're going to need to cast that as a float because it returns a double. So just put float right there because we're calling for a float. So we need to say that it's a float. And one last thing. I'm tempted to not do it and just show you guys what happens, but minus 90. Just to get it looking the way we want it to look. So we now have our target, which takes it from the acquire target, which will search our enemies eventually. For right now, we're just saying the first enemy is fine. We have our angle, which is found by calculating the angle between our tower and our enemy. And the last thing we need to do is every time we update, we want to set our angle equal to, what did I name it? Calculate angle. Because otherwise it would just look at it once and it would look where the enemy started and never move. But this time, every time it updates, it will follow the enemy. So let's start this thing and see if it works. So remember your tower won't spawn until you press T, so boom. All right, so <laughs> it kind of did what I said it would do. It, it, I think it's looking at the enemy, unless that was just a coincidence. Let's restart it here. That was a coincidence. What's going on? Is it not getting uh, updated? Angle equals calculate. Oh, okay. In our draw method, where we're drawing the tower cannon, we're drawing the cannon on top, but we're giving it an angle of 240, which was to test it. So it's always going to look at 240. So let's just change that to angle. Now it should work. So press T. And look at that. We got our tower following our enemy around the map. He's still not shooting at him, which will probably come in the next episode or two. But he follows him all the way to his death. And then he'll look at the death forever because the enemy still exists. We're just saying he's dead. And that's where he last was. But if you press T again, you can see getting another tower on top. And it looks at this new first enemy, and they can do it again. Oops. We just keep putting towers on top of the uh, other towers or whatever. But yeah, looks pretty good, huh? So thank you for watching, and I want to say that I'm going to start making a new kind of mini-series, I'm imagining, where I'm just going to go over the basics of like constructors and methods and variables and all that stuff in like really clear detail, at least I, I hope so, and hopefully that will serve as kind of like a little helpful like study guide that you guys can like cross reference if you get confused at part of the episodes because I know we go kind of fast in these game programming episodes so if you get confused maybe you can like pause it and check like all right what is this constructor again or what is this that we're doing here anyway I just want to say that here because I know that everyone on this channel currently is watching this series so this is the best way to address everyone at once anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>